Hello, welcome to part two of the pond build at Gosforth School. Today we're going to be putting the liner in. Um, so we're in the process of chucking a bit of soft sand in. Because there's a lot of gravel and rocks and so on still in the hole, the sand will cover over all of them and set us up quite nicely for adding the underlay. We've got the sand in now. It's taken about three quarters of a ton so far. So what we're going to do now is go around the sides with a rake and brush and flatten it out. Now we've got the sand pretty well spread out, we're going to put the underlay in. As we're putting the underlay down, we're overlapping it by anywhere between six inches and a foot, depending on how it goes down. And we're gonna use this, which is basically just a small blow torch to seal the underlay together, i.e. to fix this piece to this piece. What that does, it fastens everything down really nice, allows us to drag the liner over the top of it without disturbing anything. Also, prevents the, light, the underlay from blowing away because it is quite a windy day today. Also, if we get areas like this that require us to fold the underlay, we can use the heat gun to fasten it down nice and tight so that the liner doesn't have to go over a big ripple of underlay. The reason using the heat gun works on this particular type of underlay is because it's made of polyester. It's 300 grams per square meter polyester underlay. Polyester being plastic, when it's subjected to heat, it melts. So by passing a bit of heat onto here, it creates little bubbles of molten plastic. When you press that down on top, they fuse together and stick. That's the underlay in, all sealed down and um, secured with stones all the way around the sides on the outside of the pond, just in case the wind gets up and blows the whole lot away. Um, so now we're ready for the liner. Yes. 
That's it, we've loosely draped the liner in. So we're going to put a little bit of water in just to settle the liner into the bottom of the pond and then we're going to pull the sides in gradually just to accommodate the rising water. What we don't want is the sides of the pond all fixed down and then fill it up and then the liner stretched and be under pressure. It really wants to be draped in pretty loosely and then filled up. The liner we're using is a millimetre thick Firestone rubber with a 40 plus year guarantee so it's very thick good quality rubber. Now we've got the pond filling with water. The water will help to pull the liner into all the nooks and crannies. Um, we're going to help it along its way because as it's getting pulled in we're going to go around and gradually pull the liner in from the sides and allow the water to fill in all the shelves. With the pond being in a regular shape there's always going to be some folds so we'll try to predict where the folds are going to be by settling the liner in, securing it with stones just loosely and also forcing the liner into folds at certain points and then weighing that down with loose stones. When the water comes up the pressure of water should press down on those folds and keep them flat after we've removed the loose stone. So that's it, the liner's in. Um, it's in the process of being filled up. We've pulled the liner so it's draped loosely into all the shelves and hopefully when the water comes up the liner will be pressed in and it'll go in very nicely. Because this is going to take a few hours to fill up we're going to go to the quarry and get some stone. I'm pretty confident that the water is going to secure the liner well so that allows us to do that instead of standing here and watching it for the next two hours. So we'll catch up with it when we come back. That's it, we're back from the quarry. We've unloaded all the stone around the edges in various heaps. Um, the pond's just about full enough. So tomorrow we're gonna build around the shelf all the way around the pond with the dry stone wall. You'll catch that in part three. Thanks for watching.